वेलकम आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस लेक्चर इन द कोर्स संधि इन पाणिनियन ग्रामर सो फार इन दिस कोर्स वी हैव स्टडीड अच संधि हल संधि वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड विसर्ग संधि नाउ आफ्टर हैविंग स्टडिंग स्टडीड दीज थ्री important parts of sandhi in this lecture we shall start studying the next important part of the sandhi which is swadhi sandhi what is a swadhi sandhi swadhi sandhi is a sandhi which substitutes the swadi suffixes in the specific environment of deriving a pad and this pad is embedded in the derivation of a sentence or vakya so to put it in the form of an equation we can say that if we have this particular string which consists of a big bracket left hand side over here and a right hand side bracket over here indicating that this is a sentence and this has got three internal square brackets indicating that they are padas the constituents of the sentence and as the definition of sentence goes there should be at least one thing and thing is a pratyaya attached to a particular type of prakriti namely dhatu so this is dhatu plus thing this is one pad and the remaining padas will contain sup as the pratyaya so there are these two sups and the prakriti for sup is a pratipadika so therefore we have pratipadika plus sup one pad pratipadika plus sup second pad and dhatu plus thing as the third pad making this one complete sentence now in this particular structure this is a prakriti this is a pratyaya this is pratipadika this is sup now at the end of this sup there appears a particular sound and at the beginning of this second pad where there is a pratipadika at the beginning of this there is one more element and then this element at the end of the first pad which is part of sup is substituted by a particular element similarly in between these two padas this is a subanta this is a sup and this is a tinganta at the beginning of which appears a verbal root a dhatu so now this sup has got a particular element at the end and this dhatu has got another particular element at the beginning and then in this environment this particular verbal element gets substituted by another verbal element so this is a substitute in place of a sup this is a substitute in place of another sup in the sentence this particular sandhi is called swadi sandhi as you see this swadi sandhi is part of the derivation of a pad which is embedded in the derivation of a complete sentence so when we derive a sentence this is how the sentence gets derived all the elements namely pratipadika plus sup plus pratipadika plus sup plus dhatu plus thing they are all placed side by side and the derivation of each pad starts simultaneously and keeps on moving until it reaches a particular stage where internal derivation is completed and then finally this external derivation of the padas namely the internal derivation of the sentence happens 
So when two padas come into close contact, there happens a substitution in place of this sup. And this is primarily what is referred to as swadi sandhi. What is a swadi? Swadi is popularly called and technically also called vibhakti, defined by 14104 in the Ashtadhyayi. This 14104 terms both sup as well as thing as vibhakti. Sup is a set of 21 suffixes added after a nominal root also known as Pratipadika, these 21 suffixes are stated in 412 in the Ashtadhyayi. Ting are the 18 suffixes which are added after a verbal root stated in 3478 in the Ashtadhyayi and they both are called Vibhakti. In addition, there are some more suffixes which are stated in 531 to 27. They are, for example, Tral, Da, Danim, Thal, etc. These Tral, Da, Danim and Thal, they are also termed as Vibhakti. Here, L, M and L, they are marked in different colors only to indicate that they are the markers, these L are the markers and M is not the marker. Otherwise these colors do not play any role, any function over here. What is important is to know what is a Swadi. So Swadi stands for these 21 suffixes stated in 412. And Swadi Sandhi is the Sandhi that takes place of these suffixes when they come into the contact of the other Pada. So Swadi Sandhi primarily refers to the external Sandhi which happens between two Padas, mainly between a Subanta and the next pada, be it a subanta or a tinganta. Here are the 21 sups for you. Sa au as, am au as, abhyam bhyas, abhyam bhyas, as bhyam bhyas, as os am and e os sup. Now in these 21 suffixes, as we note, the consonant that comes at the end and which undergoes the sandhi operation is sir. In 11, 13-23, 33-43, 5-1 and 5-3, 6-1 and 6-2 and 7-2 appears at the end of all these suffixes. So when these sups come into close proximity with the other subantas at the beginning of which appears a pratipadika or a tinganta at the beginning of which appears a verbal root, then this is modified in a particular manner. This is what is known as swadi sandhi. Along with the sup we also have the subanta forms listed for you, namely Ramaha, Ramau, Ramaha, Ramam, Ramau, Raman, Ramena, Ramabhyam, Ramaihi, Ramaya, Ramabhyam, Ramebhya, Ramat, Ramabhyam, Ramebhya, Ramasya, Ramayoho, Ramanam, and Rame, Ramayoho, Rameshu. So, in these cases where there is Ramaha, Ramaha, Ramaihi, Ramebhya, Ramebhya, Ramayoho and Ramayoho. In these cases, there is Visarga substitution that has already happened and then when this substitution 
comes into close contact in close proximity with another subanta or another tinganta this visarga we see gets modified by some other verbal elements this is what is called swadi sandhi ma occurring at the end of these padas and also elsewhere over here and over here undergoes the general hal sandhi operation namely if it is followed by a hal then this ma is substituted by an anuswara by the sutra manuswara so this is not treated in the section of swadi sandhi and these are the things tiptas ji etc so we note that in thing also there are these suffixes that end in s tas thas was and mas thas which end in s so even in their case the swadi sandhi applies these are the forms so we have nayati nayatah nayanti nayasi nayathah nayath nayami nayavah nayamah and nayate nayate nayante nayase nayethe nayadve naye nayavah nayamah so in case of nayatah nayathah nayavah and nayamah the sandhi has already taken place and some other sandhis can also take place of s coming at the end in a given specific environment this is also studied under swadi sandhi and that is why this peculiar chapter in the pancha sandhi prakarana so if we take a recap of what we discussed of this question what is a swadi sandhi we can now pin pointedly state what that swadi sandhi is by giving specific examples earlier we saw template examples so if we have ramas followed by gramam followed by nayati these are the three padas they make one big sentence ramas gramam and nayati these are the derived finished padas now they come into contact with each other and this uh, in the environment of this g which follows which comes into close proximity is substituted to some element notably ru first then it is substituted in u and then a plus u becomes o and so you have ramo gramam gatnayati as the finally derived form of the sentence as you note this m is substituted by an anuswara because there is a hal that follows so ramam gramam gnayati this consists of this sandhi which is called the swadi sandhi this sandhi is not pertinent only to the swadis it is a general sandhi and that is why it is not categorized under swadi sandhis similarly if you have ramena gramas gamyate the passive voice then the output is ramena gramo gamyate once again the similar rule plays and this uh, is substituted by ru which in its turn is substituted by u <coughs> and then a plus u and then a plus u becomes o and finally you have ramena gramo gamyate this is the finally derived sentence so these are the concrete specific examples of swadi sandhi let us study the sutras that we shall study while studying the swadi sandhi first sasajusho ruhu 8266 अतो रोरप्लुतादप्लुते सिक्स वन 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 थ्री हशिच सिक्स वन 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 फोर भो भगो अघो अपूर्वस्य योशी 
8317, हली सर्वेशाम 8322, रो सुपी 8269, रो री 8314, ढ्रलोपे पूर्वस्य दीर्घोण 63111, एतत्तदोस सुलोपो अकोरने समासे हली 61132 सोचि लोपे चेत पादपूरणम 61134 प्रथम योग पूर्व सवर्ण 61102 एन नादीची 61104 Amongst them, let us start studying the sutra Sasajusho Ruhu. This is 8266. This sutra consists of two padas. Sasajushaha and Ruhu. Sasajushaha is 6 slash 1 of Sasajush. Sasajush is made up of two components, S, which refers to the sound S and Sajush. So Sasajushaha means in place of S and in place of the word Sajush. Ruhu is 1 slash 1 of Ru, referring to R, and so Ruhu stands for substitute in the form of R. So, Sa and Sajush, they are the substituents, Ru is the substitute. The other word continued is Padasya, 6 slash 1 of Pada. In this case, this Padasya means which is part of a Pada. So the meaning is this 6 slash 1 and this 6 slash 1, they match and so this becomes the qualifier of this 6 slash 1 and so we get the meaning in place of S that comes at the end of the Pada and in place of the word Sajush, substitute Ru. So we have Ramas which is 1 slash 1 and this sir comes at the end of the pada. So this sir is substituted by ru by 8266. So we get rama ru as the output. And then this rama ru is substituted by rama ru. And finally, this ru is substituted by the visarga. So finally, we get the form rama, which is 1 slash 1. Similarly, Sajush is then substituted by Sajuru. Then this Ru is substituted by R. And then because of this R, this short vowel gets lengthened because of the sutras that apply. And so finally, we get the form Sajuhu, which is the one slash one of Sajush. So this is how Sasajusho Ruhu applies. It substitutes Ru in place of S. This is the requirement. This is the base for the Swadhi Sandhi to happen because the Swadhi Sandhi is going to state the substitutes in place of Ru. We should note one unwritten rule which is Ashi Raha in Sanskrit. So, Ashi stands for 7 slash 1 of Ash, which means all vowels plus H plus semi vowels plus consonants 5, 4 and 3. So, Ashi means immediately before. Raha is 1 slash 1 of R, sound R and so this is the substitute. What this sutra means is the following, immediately before Ash, in place of R, substitute R. So we have R plus Ash as the input in this way and the output is R slash A. There is no other modification or substitution that takes place. So it is stated that this grammar is Ashiraha. Here are the examples. Pratar plus Atra. In this case, this is a part of Ash. So this R 
is not substituted by any other modification. So it remains as R and so we have Prataratra. Similarly, Pratar Iha, R is substituted by R only. Similarly, Pratar Asha, R has no other substitution. Pratar Hasati, this is part of Ash. Pratar Gachati, once again this is part of Ash and so R is substituted by R only. Punar Milamaha, Punar Janma, in all these cases, R coming at the end of the Pada is not substituted by any other element because there is Ash that follows. However, this is a more general rule. If we specify the left hand side environment, then there is scope for some more change in place of R. One more thing to note over here is that this R is not part of any sup. So we can say that there are R which we see at the end of the Padas which can be classified into two. R which is part of the underived lexemes like Pratar and Punar. So we have Pratar plus Ash and we get the substitute Pratar only there is no other substitution. Similarly Pratar plus Khar plus Avasana and Pratar becomes Prataha. However, if you have R which is part of Ru, then the substitutes are U and Y. How? We shall study this now. So in Swadhi Sandhi, we primarily study this second part of second type of Ru which is the substitution in place of S. And then this ru or r gets substituted by either u or by y or by deletion. This is what is Swadhi Sandhi and this is what we are going to study now. First, let us study Atorora Plutada Plute. This sutra has got four padas Ataha, Roho, Aplutad, and Aplute. Ataha is 5 slash 1 of at, referring to short a. So, Ataha means immediately after. Roho is 6 slash 1 of ru, which means in place of ru. Aplutat is 5 slash 1 of apluta, meaning not apluta. And aplute means 7 slash 1 of apluta, meaning not apluta, and immediately before this apluta. So, aplutat qualifies ataha and the other two words continued in the sutra are ut which is one slash one of ut which means short u and this short u is the substitute and ati which is seven slash one of at at referring to short a so ati means immediately before overall the sutra means in place of ru which comes immediately after a short a and which is not a plutha and which is followed by a short a which is also not a plutha substitute u. Once again in place of ru substitute u. What are the other conditions? In place of ru which comes immediately after a short a and this a should not be a plutha and this a is followed by a short a which is also not a plutha, then this ru is substituted by u. This can be put in the form of an equation in the following manner. So if you have this pada and there is a towards the end of this pada followed by ru plus a, then this ru gets substituted by u. Now once this ru is substituted by u, this becomes an input for other rules, notably the guna, so guna sandhi vidhayaka sutra, namely adgunaha and this a and u 
this becomes an input and in place of both of them a plus u plus a, a plus u is substituted by o, o plus a and then o plus a is substituted by the purva rupa namely o. Here are the examples. Shivas plus archaha. So we have sa getting substituted by ru, shivaru plus archaha. Then we have shivar plus archaha, where u is marked as it and is deleted. Now this ra appears at the end of the pada. Before that there appears a short u. This is obviously not a pluta. After this ra appears a short a, which is obviously not a pluta. Now in this case, this ra is substituted by u. So we have shiva u plus archaha. Now this a plus u is further substituted by the guna sandhi by at gunaha, and so we have shivo plus archaha. And then once again, there is this purva rupa sandhi dati which applies and substitutes one O that is Purva Rupa in place of two O plus A. And so we have finally Shivor Chaha as the finally derived form. As you see, there are two Padas over here, Shivas and Archaha. And this S is coming into the contact of the next Pada. And then this gets modified into U and finally there is a sandhi and there is a form shivor chaha that is derived. So two padas losing their boundaries and both of them getting merged into each other. This is what is the function of this particular sandhi. This is the sentential boundary. Similarly we have rukshas plus atra sir coming at the end of the pada so sasajushoruhu applies and so we have raksharu plus atra so raksharu plus atra then this ra is preceded by short a which is not a plutha and then this ra is followed by short a which is also not a plutha then in place of this ra u is substituted so we have raksha u atra raksho atra by the sutra adgunaha finally Engapadanta Dati applies and we get the form Vrakshotra. Similarly, we have another sutra called Hashicha 61114. Hashicha has got two padas, Hashi and Cha. Hashi is 7 slash 1 of Hash. Hash stands for Ha plus semi vowels plus consonants 5, 4, and 3. Hashi means immediately before hash. Words continued are ataha of 5 1 of at. At stands for short a that is immediately after. Roho is 6 slash 1 of ru. Aplutat is 5 slash 1 of apluta. Ut is 1 slash 1 of ut. So ru is the substituent and ut is the substitute. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. In place of ru, which comes immediately after a short a, which is not a plutha, and which is followed by a hash, substitute u. I repeat, in place of ru, which comes immediately after a short a, and which is not a plutha, and which is followed by a hash, substitute u. So this is the equation form of this particular statement. If we have a plus ru followed by hash, then this ru is substituted to u first and then a plus u is substituted to o plus hash. So a plus u becomes o and you have a plus u plus hash being substituted by o plus hash. So this is adgunaha that plays an important role over here. Here are the examples. Here we have Shivas plus Hasati first, in which 
sa comes at the end of the first pada followed by ha which is part of the verbal root hasa and this pada hasati is a thing anta so shivas plus hasati is part of a sentence so one subanta and one thing anta are in close proximity now sa is substituted by ru by sasajusho ruhu so we have shivaru plus hasati then this u at the end is substituted by zero so we have shivar plus hasati now this r which is preceded by short a which is not pluta and which is followed by h which is hash and therefore this r is substituted by u so we have shiva u hasati and then we have adguna applying and get shivo hasati similarly shivas plus yati sa is substituted by ru ru by r and now this r appears at the end of a pada preceded immediately by short a and followed immediately by y that is a hash and therefore this r gets substituted by u by the sutra hashicha and so we have shiva plus u plus yati and then a plus u becomes o by the sutra adgunaha and so we have shivo yati similarly shivas vandyaha and we have shivaru vandyaha and then finally we get shiva u vandyaha and then by adgunaha we get shivo vandyaha similarly shivas plus ramaha so shivaru ramaha shivar ramaha shiva u ramaha and finally shivo ramaha then we have shivas plus labhaha and shivaru plus labhaha sasajusho ruhu shivar plus labhaha and then this ru is substituted by u so we have shiva u labhaha and then adgunaha shivo labhaha similarly shivas plus yunguve yunguve begins with y so it is part of hash and so shivas plus yunguve will give us shivo yunguve as the finally derived output similarly shivas manyate being the input and we get the final output in the form of shivo manyate where ru is substituted by u and then adgunaha takes place and a and u are both substituted by o which is a guna substitute so we get shivo manyate similarly we have shivas plus gavate as the input where sa appears at the end of the pada and so sasajusho ruhu applies and then this r is substituted by u then finally adgunaha applies and we get shivo navate as the output similarly shivas plus nakaraha and the output generated is shivo nakaraha similarly shivo naha is the output generated from the input shivas plus naha in the same fashion also we have shivas plus jashaha being the input and the output generated is shivo jashaha and finally shivo bharaha is the output that is generated from shivas plus bharaha then we have shivas plus ghagati as the input and the derivation process happens and we get shivo ghagati which consists of the guna between a and u then we have shivas plus dhaukate and finally we get shivo dhaukate then we have shivas plus dharaha and the finally derived form is shivo dharaha then shivas plus jayaha as the input and the finally derived form is shivo jayaha then we have shivo shivas plus bandha as the input and shivo bandha 
as the output. Shivas plus Gadati is the next example. The same derivation process happens and we get Shivo Gadati as the finally derived output of the sentence. Then Shivas plus Damaruhu and we get Shivo Damaruhu as the output. And finally, Shivas plus Deshaha and the output generated is Shivo Deshaha. In all these examples, the Sutra Hashicha plays an important role. One thing we should note over here and it is this, that this Sandhi and the Sutras that we have studied so far give us an exception to the Asiddha principle in the Ashtadhyayi. What is the Asiddha principle? Generally, the output of the Sutra in the Asiddha section that is from 8 to 1 up to 8, 4, 68 does not become the input for any previous Sutra. This is Asiddha principle. But in this case, we see that the output of 8266, that is the Ru in place of Sir, becomes the input for 61113 and 114. This is clearly an exception to the Asiddha principle stated in the Sutra Purvatra Siddham, that is 821. There is one more example of this kind that we shall study when we study the Prakriti Bhava that we shall do later on in the course. To summarize, Swadhi Sandhi is a peculiar type of Sandhi that occurs in a specific environment. The environment is direct part of the sentence derivation at its final stage. This Swadhi Sandhi requires Padas as the input and returns the sentential combinations as output. In this lecture, we studied the U substitution that substitutes Ru at the end of this Pada. Now let us study the Ya substitution in the next lecture. Thank you for your patience.